Welcome to our REDW Tribal Training Session. To work effectively with tribes, you should be aware of not only historical, legal, and business operating environment issues, but cultural factors as well. This video will touch on these. We'll give you a background on tribal history in the United States and share some helpful information about working and communicating with our tribal clients. You'll learn about the historical significance of federal Indian policy and its relevance today in financial, tax, and legal matters. We'll also help you learn about some of the terms that are specific to tribes and tribal governments. Let's start by defining what we mean when we refer to a tribe. The map shown illustrates the different tribes and their original territories that existed prior to the European colonialism. Today, there are over 560 federally recognized tribes in the United States and several state recognized tribes. The federal government defines a tribe as a group with a common culture, history, and ancestry whose ancestors were in the United States prior to the arrival of the Europeans. You may also hear tribes referred to as nations, which expresses their sovereign status. Federally recognized tribes have a legal relationship with the U.S. government and its agencies, unlike that of any other group of Americans. This relationship is based on the recognition of tribes as sovereign nations by the U.S. Constitution. The federal government also signed more than 500 treaties with Indian tribes, beginning with the first non-native settlements until 1871. So the relationships between the federal government and federally recognized tribes is political and is based on their government-to-government -government relationship, not on the ethnicity of the Native Americans themselves. Through the treaties, many tribes gave up certain lands and rights to the U.S. government in exchange for various federal commitments that included provisions for the future of their people. In the treaties, tribes' rights were often reserved for their new communities, lands, and livelihoods, including tracts of land, which were called reservations. Native American, American Indian, Alaska Native, each of these terms can refer to a person who is descended from ancestors indigenous to the lands that are now part of the United States. Alaska Native is the term for peoples indigenous to Alaska. Tribal members may use any one of these terms to refer to themselves, but keep in mind that it is generally preferable to refer to an individual as a member of his or her particular tribe. We use the term Indian country to refer to any and all of the Native American communities throughout the United States. Tribal sovereignty or the authority to be self-governing, is one of the most significant issues for tribes. Sovereignty is recognized as being inherent, meaning that it existed long before the tribe's contacts and relationship with the current U.S. government. As part of the sovereign status of Indian tribes, their tribal governments have the authority to adopt their own form of government that suits their needs. Tribal governments combine some traditional ways with Western government characteristics. They can define their tribal membership criteria, establish court systems, provide law enforcement and other municipal type of services. They run health care clinics and schools and tax non-tribal members who engage in business on their lands. Next, we'll take a look at the historic periods that can provide some background and perspective on present day policies and issues surrounding federal Indian policy. Europeans signed the first treaties with Indian tribes in the early 1600s. Even after 1871, there were many written agreements between tribes and the U.S. that functioned like treaties. The General Allotment Act, also known as the Dawes Act, was passed in 1887. It broke up reservation lands and assigned allotments to individual tribal members. As a result of allotment policies, by 1934, tribes had lost 90 million of their 138 million acres of reservation lands, which then fell out of federal trust land status. During this time, the federal government sponsored efforts to assimilate Native Americans into mainstream society. Many Native American children were sent to boarding schools during this period, where they were prohibited from using their tribal languages and traditional practices. The next phase of federal policy was meant to support the reorganization of Indian tribes. The Indian Reorganization Act of 1934 ended the allotment of reservations and ensured that any allotment still held in trust for individual Indians could not be sold. It also provided a means for formalizing tribal governments through written constitutions or charters, and many tribal constitutions were adopted during this period, and they also required U.S. government approval for federal recognition. During the termination period, many of the reorganization era reforms were reversed. 
the U.S. government decided to terminate federal recognition of many tribes. Termination policy was intended to further promote assimilation of Native Americans into mainstream American society. In some cases, termination led to a loss of federal resources and services. A few tribes terminated during this period have successfully petitioned to have their federal recognition restored. Many individual tribal members were sent to large cities for jobs and training, which were called relocation programs. In the late 1960s, federal policy began to support the concept of tribal self-determination. Various laws and presidential policies strengthened support for tribal sovereignty and supported tribes in providing the services the federal government was responsible to provide in order for tribes to gain greater self-sufficiency and provide more relevant services to their own people. We won't cover all of the details of federal Indian law and policy in this training, but we'll spend some more time on the concept of self-determination in the next slide. Tribal sovereignty includes the inherent rights of tribes to exercise self-governance over their lands and people. These rights are recognized in Public Law 93638. The Act established procedures by which tribes could assume administration of their own social services, education, health, and other services via contracts from federal agencies to fulfill the federal obligations. Public Law 93638 is a basis for our work with tribes that want to assume management of their health services delivery. In this process, the tribe's health services transition from the federal government's Indian Health Service to a model that is managed directly by a tribal entity. The law is also used to transition education, law enforcement, judicial, and social services from the Bureau of Indian Affairs to local tribal governments. Further, we audit many of these 638 agreements during the single audit process and in providing consulting services, we understand the regulatory requirements to assist tribes with successfully accounting for transitioning and operating these programs. Native American tribes share many common values, practices, and circumstances. However, each tribe is unique. Only by having interactions, experiences, and by developing personal relationships will you begin to understand their individual tribal cultures and begin to develop the skills that will help you to communicate effectively. That is our goal, for good communication and cross-cultural awareness will mean that you are creating the best foundation for service to our tribes. In your work as an REDW team member, you are representing the firm. Remember that many of the federal policies toward tribes resulted in a distrust of the federal government and outside entities which makes it especially important that your interactions with tribes are carried out in a thoughtful and respectful manner. Culture can be described as a way of life of a people. It includes an array of behaviors and beliefs. Cultural factors may differ greatly from culture to culture. When you are interacting with Indian country people, consider that their history is viewed from their tribe's own perspective. Their cultural practices and values have developed over thousands of years but were greatly disrupted in the past 100 years. Spirituality and ceremonies, sacred places, objects, beliefs, and gender roles, all of these contribute to their social etiquette and influence their governmental structures, protocols, and laws. A strong respect for spirituality is common among tribes. For example, many tribes conduct meetings with traditional opening and closing ceremonies, which may be in the form of a prayer. Be aware that traditional tribal beliefs and practices are not to be shared publicly, unless you are given express permission to do so. Each tribe may have different cultural practices, but their core values remain the same. These values are the foundation of their culture. Communities are the keepers of the culture and share resources generously. This is often in contrast to Anglo-American cultural values, where individuals are often respected for their material accumulation, material possessions, and consumption. Many tribal members speak English as a second language. According to the U.S. Census Bureau, about one quarter of American Indians and Alaska Natives, five years and older, speak a language other than English at home. Like traditional Native American religions, the use of native languages was discouraged by the schools that many Indian children were forced to attend. As a result, many Native American languages are in danger of being lost. To respond to this threat, many tribes have started native language programs to encourage native language use. It is a priority for many tribes. Tribal members may put much more emphasis on listening than on speaking. This shouldn't be interpreted as an indifference. 
or not caring. It is a part of the culture. Listening, observing, and memorizing are skills that are often taught from the beginning as important skills to have. While other cultures may value the written word and talking just for the sake of talking, tribal culture instead uses storytelling as a way of expressing ideas and feelings and passing down history from one generation to the next. The value and tradition of storytelling is present in many tribal communities as a way of honoring the wisdom of elders and carrying on traditional values. Tribes have a strong consensus culture. Often, tribal leaders will deliberate extensively and consider the long-term consequences of their decisions. Be sensitive to this possibility as it is a part of understanding the tribal culture. Respect can be demonstrated in many ways. If you are willing to admit to your limited knowledge of tribal culture, you can then ask tribal members to educate you about the specific protocols in their community. Always remember that you are a guest of the tribe that you are visiting. Make sure you follow any protocol that the firm has set up for working with the tribe. And be aware that like other governmental agencies, tribes experience changing administrations and priorities. If you are unsure of how to handle a particular situation during your visit to a tribal community, you can ask politely and softly about what you should do or contact your supervisor or leader in our tribal practice for advice. While many of the tribal traditions that we have spoken about today still remain in our communities, there are diverse lifestyles of people, just like any other community. There are mixtures of the practices of tribal culture and religion. Native languages are sometimes still spoken, and many tribes are working to restore and retain their language and culture. Identify someone to interpret for you if you need. We thank you for listening today and wish you well on your career journey.